and in this video we're going to be making a simple respawn so if you watched the last video you would have seen that we got to this point here so we kill a player nothing happens and after X amount of seconds they simply are cleaned up and taken out from the world as you can see you're gone you can't move can't do anything you're non-existent so we're going to go ahead and set up a little respawn and we're going to respawn at a fixed point for now we'll expand on this in the future to respawn at random locations adding a delay and all that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and actually oh there is one more thing I want to change so if you look for example here I'm walking into the person and it stops me well even if I kill him and then walk I'm still walking into that capsule component so even though the actor is actually cleaned up oh, where is it well anyways the capsule component's still there even though the actor got deleted so we need to go ahead and remove that so we can do that by going back to our multicast die function and just simply do get capsule component destroy component and that's it that'll take care of that now our respawn function is going to go in our game mode so we're gonna start actually using this and eventually move some more stuff over to it but what the idea is here okay so game mode so there's a game mode and a game state a game mode is what holds all your logic whereas the game state would hold public variables that, that the clients can see such as okay team 1 has a score of X and team 2 has a score of X and all clients would be able to see that so that way if you had a HUD set up like up at the top or something you could have kinda of like a team deathmatch score that you could visibly see and just everything's kinda of everything like regarding the game modes taken care of in there and shown to us so inside the game mode we're gonna have our respawn function so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new section make sure it's public and call it respawn so void respawn oh and it needs to take in a controller so a controller let's copy this a survival void a survival game mode and we're in here so if role equals role authority then print out a log in respawn just as a test now let's go back over here to our character we need to actually include the game mode so let's do it hashtag include survival game mode dot h and back in our die function here we're gonna go ahead and get access to that game mode so first thing we need to do is get we're gonna get a game mode base so a game mode base uh, just call this gm equals get world get off game mode now if a survival game mode game mode equals cast a survival game mode GM then we do all of our stuff so what we're doing is we're essentially getting the game mode and then we're trying to cast it to our a survival game mode so if that cast is successful meaning that is our game mode can do whatever we want with it so we can do game mode uh, res respawn then it takes in a controller so we'll just do get controller so we're calling our respawn function already let's go ahead and build and once it's done building we should have a little log printed out in here let's go ahead and clear so kill him and yep the logs there saying in respawn so now we're going to actually set ourselves up so I'm just gonna get rid of this so to spawn that we're gonna use spawn actor and spawn actor goes off of the world so in order to get access to the world we need to do 
I'll include engine and engine.h. So now we can do get world spawn actor and as you can see it's a template. So instead of doing a survival character as the type we're actually going to be doing a pawn. So if you look up here in our constructor you can see it's already got our default player class up here. So you can see default pawn class you hover over it, the type is a pawn. Now it's essentially T subclass self is kind of like a U class, which is what this is going to take in. So we're going to do a pawn as the type, and then if you go up here, you see it takes in a U class, so that'll be a default pawn class. Then the one we want is going to take in a location, so let's go ahead and create that. Uh, we'll just do it on this thing. And its location is negative 400, 50, 190. So f vector location equals f vector. Uh, what was it? 400, 50, and it was 90. So I want to just do. I'll just do 200 just to be safe and make sure we're above the ground. So then pass in location as the next parameter and then another one will be rotation so we're just gonna doesn't we don't care about that so f rotator zero rotator now as you can see the type that's going to return is a pawn because that's what we're passing in as the in, well for the template so a pawn pawn and just set it to equal it so now we can do a check so Actually, we can do the check up here. So if this is successful, we want to possess it. So to do that, it's very simple. We just do controller off of the controller we just passed in. Possess. And what do we want to possess? The pawn. So let's go ahead and build it. And I'll explain what we're doing just one more time. Actually, we should also add a check for the controller to make sure that that's valid as well. I'll just do that here in a second. Let's test it. When I kill this guy, he should spawn over there at that spinny thing. Killed. And he respawned. And as you can see, everything is the exact same. He can even kill this guy. And I'll just keep going back and forth. I can interact with everything. It's as if nothing ever happened. Which is what we want. As you can see, all of these keep piling up because of we're respawning that actor. <laughs> so, what we're doing is, once we call our die function, we are on the server. We're going to go ahead and get access to our game mode to call our respawn function. And we're just going to go ahead and pass in our player controller. So what we can do from there is, I'm going to go ahead and add that check. So if controller... Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to spawn an actor in the world. It's going to be of a type pawn. We already have our default pawn class, thanks to how this was set up. And we're just going to spawn it at the location, well, these coordinates here, which just so happens to correspond to the spinning green thing. Then we're just going to zero out the rotation, because it really doesn't matter. So zero is essentially facing this way. So we're going to just go ahead and spawn the actor and store that actor in a variable called pawn. And then we're simply going to take our controller that was recently possessing this dead character that we're destroying and we're going to make it possess the new pawn that we just created. So as you can see, it's, it's really incredibly simple to do. And this will be a good little foundation for us to build up on in the next, well, probably won't touch on it in the next video or maybe we'll I'm not sure what I want to do yet just like before so either way I'll just see you in the next one